Hello viewers, today we are going to start off the series on permutations and combinations and today's the first lesson is all about counting. How do we count? Not simple 1, 2, 3 count but how do we count the number of ways in which two or more events or activities can be performed either simultaneously or one after the other. And to understand that, let us start with a simple example. Suppose a person is traveling from city A to city C and he has to make a stopover in say city B. In how many ways can he do so? Provided what we know is that from city A to city B, he can travel either by car or take a train. Whereas from city B to city C, he has three options. He may go by car or travel by train or can use a plane. So what are the number of ways in which he can make this journey from A to B and then B to C? Now it's very, very obvious that the person has a choice of going from A to B by car and then again taking a car from B to C or he may go from A to B by car but from B to C he may choose to go by air so he travels by plane. Similarly, he may choose A to B the car and from B to C train. So there are already three ways and similarly three more possibilities arise if he go from A to B by train and then he chooses either car or plane or train. So in other words, there are six different ways in which the person can travel from city A to city C if he makes a stop at city B on his way. Let us take another possibility. A person has four shirts and he can match them up with three pants and then there are two ties that he can select from. Now how many ways can he get dressed? If you start with an understanding that suppose we are looking at our first red shirt and with that red shirt he now has three choices. He can take either of these three pants and then he may dress himself with either of these two ties. So if he takes the red shirt and the grey pant and then he has the choice of two ties either grey or red. Similarly, with each of these trousers, you are able to see there are two other ways that he can dress himself by changing the ties that he wears. So what would be the total number of ways that the person get dressed up? As of now, with the red shirt, there are six number of ways in which he can dress. Isn't that so? Now looking back, what we are looking at is a possibility of four different shirts, three pants and two shirts two ties. And so how many ways does he get dressed up? Well, for each shirt there are six ways which was three into two. So with four shirts and three pants and two ties, the total number of ways a person can dress up will become four into three into two which is same as 24. So is there a some hidden principle behind this calculation that we have done? Well, yes, there is and it is nothing but called as the fundamental principle of counting. The fundamental principle of counting states, if an event can occur in m different ways, following which another event can occur in n different ways, then the total number of occurrence of the events in the given order is m times n. And that is what you saw in the previous two examples. The number of ways in which the person could travel from A to C stopping at B was 2 times 3, that is 6. And the number of ways he could dress with 4 shirts and 3 pants and 2 ties was 4 into 3 into 2. So the fundamental principle of counting stays with us in our daily life as well. And what we are going to look at is certain applications stated as a word problem. And only thing that you have to use is the basic understanding of what the problem states and keep in mind the use of fundamental principle of counting. So I hope you are now ready for applying this result. 
here is our very simple first question for you. A die is rolled three times and the outcomes are recorded. How many possible outcomes are there? Well, when you think about a die and you roll it once, how many outcomes do you possibly get? Yes, six. And therefore, when you roll a die three times, the number of total outcomes will be six into six into six. 216 possible outcomes coming from the basic what result we just looked at called as the fundamental principle of counting. Now a simple result but does come in handy when you think about our next few topics that are going to come your way especially even in probability we talk about what are the total possible outcomes when a die is rolled three times and you need to know this kind of a calculation. Here is another example. An exhibition hall has six doors. In how many ways can a person enter the hall through one door and come out through a different door? Isn't that a very interesting situation? There are six doors. You enter through one, but you come out from a different one. In how many ways can a person do so? Again, I guess you would have already understood what you have to do. If a person enter through one particular door, then for exiting, he has how many possibilities? Five different ways. And there were six possible entrances. So, the entrance can be done in how many ways? Six ways, whereas the exit can be done only in five ways. And therefore, by fundamental principle of counting, the total number of possible ways of doing so will be six times five, which is nothing but 30. Here is another equation for us. How many four digit numbers can be formed using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 if two parts here repetition of digits is not allowed and second possibility repetition of digits is allowed. So when we say repetition of digits is not allowed it means I cannot have a number like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and or any other where we have 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5. I am not looking at the 1 being used or any other of these digits used more than once. And we are looking at a 4 digit number being formed. So, if you think of it as 4 places marked in red here, which need to be filled by either of these 6 digits that are given to us. Now, we want this to be a 4 digit number. And therefore, the very first condition is that in the first place, you cannot have a 0. Because if you put a 0 in the thousands place, it is no longer a 4 digit number. So, 0 cannot go into the first place. So, what are the possible ways that we can fill up this place? Will be either a 1, 2, 3 or 5. That means, 5 different ways can be used to fill up the thousands place. Now, when we look at the next position that is a hundreds place, 0 can very well be there. But since our first part is repetition of digits is not allowed, whatever has gone into the thousands place is no longer available. But 0 is. So, how many ways or how many digits are now available for us to fill up this place? To fill up the thousand, there were 5. To fill up 100, again 5 because 0 is now available but what we have used up in hundreds is not. So, hundreds place can be filled in 5 ways. Now, I am sure you know what to do for the tens place. The tens place can be filled in 4 ways because 2 digits have already been used up. Similarly, the ones place can be filled in 3 ways. So, we have 4 places each one can be filled in different number of ways starting with thousands in five, hundreds in five, tens in four and the units in three ways. So, how many total number of numbers that you can form using these four places to be filled up? We are looking at again using the fundamental principle of counting and the fundamental principle of counting says that the product of the number of ways will be your total possible ways and therefore, the number of four digit numbers that can be formed 
using the given digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 when repetition is not allowed will be 5 times 5 times 4 times 3 turns out to be 300 and now let us look at the second possibility what if the repetition is allowed that means a digit which is already used in one place whether it is hundreds or tens it is again available for the other places what you only have to now keep in mind is that we are making a four digit number so zero cannot go into the thousands place so thousand place can still be filled in only five ways whereas a hundreds place can be filled in six ways because zero is available and whatever had been put in thousands is also available similarly the tens place can be filled in six ways and the units also in six ways so when repetition is allowed the total number of four digit numbers that can be formed will be 5 times 6 times 6 times 6 turns out to be 1080 so obviously when the digits are allowed to be repeated larger number of such numbers can be formed now what you are looking at here is that we are talking about making use of continuous products coming in somewhere or other in order to make our work more compact we bring in a certain notation which is very popularly used in the discussion on permutations and combinations and that is of factorial so let us see what do we mean by factorial of a given number we define the factorial to be the continued product of first n natural numbers and call it n factorial written as n with the exclamation mark right so it is n factorial which is now the product of the first n natural numbers so n factorial has a value same as 1 into 2 into 3 going right up to n can also be thought of as a reducing product so you start with n times n minus 1 times up to 3 times 2 times 1 because multiplication is commutative you can always turn it around and write it in whichever order you may want this means that if I am looking at 5 factorial then 5 factorial is nothing but product of 5 and 4 3 2 up to 1 so 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 gives me the value of 5 factorial which is 120 now although we are talking about n factorial defined for natural numbers we also for convention sake and because we will be using this in our further discussion we define 0 factorial to be nothing but just 1 factorial and also n factorial may be thought of written as n times of n minus 1 factorial that means 5 factorial could always be written as 5 times of 4 factorial because 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 is nothing but 4 factorial so 5 factorial could be written as 5 times of 4 factorial and in general n factorial can always be written as n times of n minus 1 factorial let us just take two simple exercises to make you a little comfortable with this notation the problem here says evaluate what will be the value of 20 factorial divided by 18 factorial what you have to only consider is that if we expand the larger of the two factorials along that expansion you will run into a continued product which is going to be the factorial of the smaller number present in the expression for example here if I rewrite 20 factorial it is same as 20 into 19 into 18 up to 1 so if I am looking at 18 into 17 into 16 and so on that is nothing but 18 factorial and therefore the expression gets simplified and becomes 
nothing but 20 times 19 and hence the value is 380. Similarly, I am sure you can now try the, our next question which is 12 factorial divided by 7 factorial times 5 factorial. So, if I keep the 7 factorial in the denominator as it is and expand 12 factorial in the numerator, I have that 7 factorial coming up in the product which gets cancelled with the 7 factorial in denominator and rest of the numbers as factors can be simplified and you end up with your answer. One more question which asks you to find n. If it is given that n plus 1 factorial is 12 times n minus 1 factorial. So, in a way we have to solve this equation for n and the equation contains factorial notation. So, what would one do? Do I expand n minus 1 factorial or n plus 1 factorial? Obviously, n plus 1 is more than n minus 1. So, I start with n plus 1 factorial which can be written as n plus 1 into n into n minus 1 factorial. Obviously, then n minus 1 factorial gets cancelled and I end up with a quadratic in n. You get two values of n, but remember n was greater than or equal to 0 and therefore, the answer for this equation turns out to be 3. Now, this notation of factorial plus fundamental principle of counting will stay with us for our next three lessons as well. So, let us see if you are with us for our next lesson. Thank you for watching today's lesson.